It's a blessing to welcome on a top 100 recruit and the first and only commit to Illinois' 2021 recruiting class, Lou Goody. What's going on there, man? Not much, not much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, I mean, let's just get into this. You've not been committed for a little bit, going to Illinois. Take us to this decision. Why is Illinois the school you want to attend? Illinois was the school that I wanted to attend um, for many reasons, one being the coaching staff and the players there already. Um, Coach Underwood is doing something special at Illinois um, as they have a potential top 10 preseason team with the two, uh, Io and Kofi, coming back. So what he's been able to do at Illinois just shows that he's a legit coach and he's a proven coach. Um, He did it at Oklahoma State and he did it at Stephen F. Austin before that. So um, him being a coach, then Coach Gentry, um, my recruiting coach, showed me that I was someone that they really wanted in the program, and that's something that stood out to me, and they recruited me the hardest um, compared to all the other schools, and it was just the overall best fit for me. Now, there was a time period, a couple of weeks in that, everything was kind of going great for Illinois. You guys were getting guys coming back. All the talent, obviously, Adam Miller's going out there, Andre Coleman. Just having this buzz and this feeling around Illinois right now, what does that feel like to know that you're part of that? It's really cool. Um, I, that's funny that you say that because – um, whenever it was a month ago when I and Kofi both announced they came back, I talked to my mom. I was like, it's a good time to be committed to Illinois. It was pretty cool just to see that and see the fan base come together around the basketball team and support them like that. And just to know that I've got next is um, cool. Uh, just to know that the program is in a great place. They've got um, high hopes for this season and they're in a great position. And then to be able to go in um, as a freshman next year and be committed already is, is really cool. And there were a few programs across the country that had really great years last season. And because of that, obviously, led to all the success now of guys wanting to commit there. Illinois is one of them. ASU is another big one. But you chose Illinois because they won. They had a lot of very successful year in the Big Ten last year. Well, how much of a factor was that, knowing that they were successful and they had a winning season last year? That was another big thing in my recruitment is I wanted to go to a program that wins. They have a winning um, history. I know Illinois as a program itself hasn't had a winning history, um, but now that Coach Underwood is here, um, you see what he did second in the Big Ten last year. So having Illinois on the map and being known as kind of a powerhouse in the Big Ten, I'd say now, or becoming a powerhouse in the Big Ten, mm-hmm. um, winning a lot of games last year, 21-10, and 10, I think the record was before they got shut down. So um, it's definitely something that I want to contribute to when I get there. So you're looking through all this. I mean, you've got to go on some this prior to all this stuff being shut down. You're looking at all these factors. What were the couple of things that you're really looking for in a college? And how did Illinois separate themselves from everyone else? Um, like I said earlier, just the winning tradition, um, the coaching staff, how I fit in with the team, and just all around everything, just the feel. I mean, what a lot of people that I talked to during my recruitment process said, you'll go somewhere and you'll just have a feeling. You'll just know that that's a place that you could fit into well. And that's kind of what I felt. Um, when I visited there, I went to the IU and Purdue game last year um, when Illinois played them at home. And every time I went there, the coaches made me feel like it was home. Um, they showed me exactly what I needed to see to be able to commit, and that's exactly what I did. And so you had a lot of offers. I mean, Michigan State, Louisville, Stanford, Maryland. A lot of schools were in the mix for you. Who ultimately was kind of the last school you kind of up against? I mean, was there anyone else maybe another score two that you were really seriously considering until you made the decision? Yeah, so now that I've kind of committed and it's over with, I can um, say how I did or made my decision is I kind of got it down to top two schools. Um, It was between Michigan State and Illinois. And I told the coaching staffs of each program that 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 they were in the top two. And then I think a week later, I said, I'm going to be committing pretty soon. So whatever team shows that they want me more and will recruit me the hardest is where I'm going to go. And Illinois um, showed constant love and got on a couple of zoom calls with them. Talked to the head coach Underwood um, once or twice a week, talked to coach Gentry almost every day. And they just really proved to me that um, they wanted me more than the other schools. So that's where I chose. Why did you take that route? A lot of guys like the top 12, top 10, narrowing it down all the way down to the final one. You didn't announce that. You just said you're committing. What went into that? Why, why did you take that route? Yeah, well, I'm not a big, like, attention guy, uh, like, posting on Instagram and all that stuff, top 12, so I didn't want too much attention. I just kind of wanted the process to get over with. I was comfortable with the two schools that I had. Um, I knew I was far along in the process, far enough along in the process to make a decision, and those were the schools that fit me the best. So there was no really point to me in making a top 12. I mean, that's a good way to go for some players who are still deciding, but I was so far along and so far advanced with those two schools that – um, it was kind of a no-brainer for me. And once I got it down to two, I felt like the decision was going to be a lot easier for me. And I believe when you're looking down, I mean, you kind of wanted to commit like a month after you originally did it. Was that part of the reason you wanted AAU to see if that was going to come out? Or why did you kind of want to originally 
commit still during the AU season, like June, May is time? Um, well, the whole coronavirus thing really put a big um, skew in everything. I was planning on, like you said, waiting a little bit towards AAU season. And um, this whole thing came about. There's a lot of question marks if we'll even have AAU season, if I'll be able to even visit anymore. I mean, there's still a dead period, I think. I might have gotten over September 1st. I don't know exactly the rules. But mm. um, with this whole coronavirus thing, I didn't know if I was going to be able to visit anywhere. So new schools that were coming in weren't really an option. And um, the other schools that were kind of behind in the recruitment process, I just kind of decided that the two schools like I had or that I had, um, like I said earlier, were ones that I would be very happy to commit to. And um, after I did that process, then I was fine with it. Now you'll be playing the Big Ten, one of if not the best conference in America, the conference that has the most sold out games, a heavy fan base, and basketball is loved out there. Obviously, what? How excited you be to go and be embraced by the fans and go against some of the best fans as well when you play against those other Big Ten teams. I'm so excited. Growing up a kid in Indiana, um, everybody's dreaming to play in the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. And that was one of my goals from a very young age since I started playing basketball. So being able to play in the Big Ten in front of all these home crowds, um, playing against a bunch of my AAU teammates and my good friends like, like Caleb going to Purdue and um, a bunch of other guys going to the Big Ten, Julian Roper, Northwestern, just to name a few. It's going to be fun just being able to play against guys I know and um, crowds that are crazy. So Big Ten is definitely, in my opinion, the best conference by far. Um, last year, you could obviously see that they had the most projected bids to the tournament. So being able to play in a conference with that high level of teams and that high level of coaching and just the play style is something I'm very excited for. I never like asking this until you guys do commit, but growing up, who was in your dream school? What was the team you rooted for growing up? So both of my parents actually went to Indiana. So I kind of grew up um, in an Indiana family. I uh, went to a couple games there, and then obviously since I started getting recruiting, I didn't really have a favorite team. Mm -hmm. um, and that wasn't necessarily ever a dream school for me. I was just always a fan because both of my parents went there. And how do you kind of learn to separate that? I mean, I know growing up it's kind of the passion you have. It's hard to separate that for some guys. How do you kind of learn to separate your fandom and kind of growing up childhood times and decide it's kind of business now? Well, I realized I needed to be the de best decision for myself. Uh, maybe not my feelings, but – the best decision for just everything all around and Indiana actually never did offer me. So that wasn't really an option in the first place. I did visit there a couple times, but I never was offered. Um, so obviously I wasn't going to go there, but um, being able to just separate that wasn't too bad for me because I knew it was a business decision. Um, it was a decision for my family and myself. And the best decision for me was to just um, take another route. You are the lone guy. You're the only guy in 2021 right now. Is there anyone you're talking to that you would like to bring with you to out of your class? Yeah, a couple of names um, that I've been trying to recruit is Mac Etienne. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, if that's right or not. Um, he's a guy that we've been – or the coaches have been recruiting hard. I've reached out to a couple of times. Um, Bryce Hopkins, who has Illinois in his top nine, digitally committed from Louisville. I've been talking to him a good amount. Um, guys like Jordan Nesbitt, um, other guys like that, some wings that we need as well. Um, just guys like that, trying to get them to come too. Let's talk about 2020 class. That's one of the better classes Illinois has ever had before. Headed by Adam Miller. Andre's another star set of guy. Coleman's who I think might just be the most underrated guy in 2020. What's your ratio like with some of those guys? So Coleman actually, uh, before I committed, reached out to me and texted me and told me how great Illinois was and how he wants to be my teammate. So I've actually become pretty close with him, honestly. I haven't really talked to him in person yet just because of this whole thing. I haven't been able to visit at all, but – through the phone and social media and talking like that, I've actually been able to talk to him a good amount. So just kind of being close, kind of close to him and getting familiar with him is definitely something that uh, I like about it. We all know Coleman's a funny guy. He always, he always tries yeah. to bring the fun and everything. Were you kind of caught off guard before you really got to know him? When did you really start noticing that he was that kind of character guy? And just what was that first time kind of getting to know him like? Yeah, so actually, like, the day after I committed, I went on live, on Instagram live with him. And <laughs> he never talked to him in my life. He started, like, making jokes about me and making fun of me, <laughs> stuff like that, just um, acting like I've known him for years. And that's kind of when I realized that he's going to be a fun guy to play with, a fun guy to hang out with. No doubt, man. And, I mean, you look at just going to Illinois, it's got a lot of history behind him now as well. What do you look to accomplish now in your four years or however long you end up staying out there? Yeah, well, the sky's the limit for the program. Um, the last couple of years, Coach Underwood has proven what he can do with the team, and hopefully this year they can go even further. And my goal when I get there is not to slow down at all, just keep going. Um, obviously, won a Big Ten championship. That's been a goal of mine since I've uh, wanted to play basketball and then 
make a run for the national championship. Every single basketball co- college basketball player um, that truly wants it will say that their goal is to win a national championship. So obviously that's my goal as well. And just to be the best teammate I can be, I want to go there and prove to everybody that doubts me that um, I'm good enough to play at that level and I can hang with those guys. There is countless guys that have come out of the, out of Illinois out to the NBA, a lot of big time players. Is there any former Illinois player that you think you play a lot like, or even as an NBA player that you think you play a lot like? Um, not necessarily Illinois player that I play like. Um, I'm not too familiar with Illinois history as much. Um, I do know Deron Williams and that the early 2000s team that went to the Final Four, um, that team. But there's no tr- really player um, in Illinois history that I really compare myself to. Absolutely. So who can Illinois fans expect from you? What kind of players – is there an NBA player you think you play a lot like or what can they expect from you? <laughs> well, that's a good question. I don't really know a, true, a really NBA player that I can – I'd say Kevin Herter may, might be a good comparison. He plays like me, looks like me a little bit, or I look like him a little bit. But um, I'd say the way he plays and the way I play kind of go hand in hand. You watch my game and can play off ball screens, shoot the ball um, fairly well, and can play defense. And I feel like that's kind of how he plays. And um, going back to your question too, Illinois fans um, can expect a lot of wins and a hardworking player that will do whatever it takes for uh, his team to win. So that's what I'm going to bring to Illinois. I'm going to bring passion and my leadership, and then the skills and athleticism and everything else that comes with that. You did mention that you're going to be able to play against a lot of guys in the Big Ten that you're close friends with. I mean, Indiana as a whole, the states are really under the radar state. A lot of talent out there, a lot of guys going to the Big Ten. Who are some guys that you're the most excited to go play against when you get out there? I'm the most excited to play against Caleb. Uh, Caleb first, he's going to Purdue. He's actually been one of my childhood best friends. Um, we played AAU together starting in second grade all the way until 17U EYBL. So it was tough that I couldn't finish out the AAU run with him just because we started it together. Kind of wanted to finish it together. But being able to play 17U last year too, both of us getting moved up, being able to play p Sham, make that run, the best run Indy Heat has had. Um, it's been a great experience with him. And we battled in high school, and now we're going to be battling in college. So that's a guy that I'm really, really excited to play against in college um, just to continue our friendship and add some smack talk to it. Having a childhood friend, man, I can imagine you guys talk at some point about possibly teaming up if stuff started to align. Was there ever somewhere that you guys got kind of close to or talked about possibly teaming up with somewhere in college? Yeah, so with respect to Caleb and his recruitment, we did consider one school um, that we would – obviously both had offers from that we would have both considered and we just decided that it was the best decision for us um we never really talked about like we talked about us teaming up possibly but not like you should or I'm gonna go here and you go here we just kind of decided that the schools that uh, both of us picked were the best choices for us and that's just kind of how it went that's awesome let's talk about your life getting to the point you're at you started playing soccer flag football started playing basketball in first grade though and that's really where you fell in love with it What's this past like decade now been like? Are you kind of developing and turning into the player you are today? It's been crazy. It's been a lot of roller coasters and up and downs. Um, if you ask anybody that I played against or played with, and from fifth grade to about eighth grade, I was a scrub. <laughs> Didn't really play very much. I played with Team Teague, but um, a lot of guys were passing me up and a lot better than me, and I've just always kind of been the underdog, and I've always worked hard and uh, worked my tail off to try and get to where I am today, and I'm just going to keep doing that. And um, this past 10 years and whatever, playing football as well. Um, this is the first year I'm not playing football. So now being specialized into one sport, my mind and my focus and the grind is uh, fully on basketball. So I'm ready to dedicate my life to that and uh, ready for the next next step. We'll discuss football in a second, but when was that turning point for you? When did you realize basketball is a legit thing that you can get out of college? You can be a high-level player. Um, I kind of realized it freshman year um, when I started getting attention from college coaches after one tournament in Fort Wayne, SBs. Um, after that tournament, I had a couple of mid-major schools reach out to my coaches, and I was like, okay, this is, this is pretty cool. This is something that I want to pursue. And I always tell people um, I, I did – I would have had opportunities to play college football if I pursued that sport. Um, but from day one, I've always told people I love basketball and I like football. I enjoy playing football and everything about it, but basketball is just my love. So once I started getting interest um, from mid-major and high-major schools for basketball, I just knew that it was a no-brainer. If I have the opportunity to play in college for free um, for basketball or football, it'll be – no, I wouldn't even have to think about it. It'd be a done, done deal. So that's kind of how that um, happened. Would you say you ever did consider being a dual sport athlete playing football and basketball at the college level? Um, 
that's something I really didn't cross my mind too much. I knew that it was going to be basketball the whole time. I never really thought I'd be a college football player. Um, but there was, <laughs> there was a school that was a little bit interested in having me play both just because my dad knew the football coach, but um, not too much. And you were an incredible football player. I mean, you're a quarterback that you said this will be your first year not playing. Only lost one game last year, two interceptions while you still had 27 touchdowns. You were able to obviously play at a high level. You were a Division one kind of prospect for football level. How did you develop into that? What was it like being a, really a star player at both sports? Well, so my family is actually a huge football family. My dad played at IU. Um, I have two uncles that played in the NFL. My grandpa played in the NFL and won a Super Bowl with the Dolphins. Um, actually, I have three uncles that played in the NFL. So I've just got a football family. I think I have four or five cousins that played Division One football, too. One's at Notre Dame as a wide receiver. Um, TJ Green, quarterback at Northwestern. And Derek Green, quarterback at SMU. Um, so I just have a lot of family in the football the football sport. And growing up, that's just always been a sport that I played. My dad was a quarterback in high school. And when he went to IU, he actually moved positions. But he kind of grew me up as a quarterback. And um, just playing that position and growing up in a football family is definitely something that um, was pretty cool because I can tell people who I'm related to and all the experiences I have with that. Um, but I enjoy football, and I'm glad that I had the experiences that I did with it. I want to really touch into that family aspect. You're going through a family, as you said. Your uncle's obviously Trent Green, an iconic NFL player. Your grandfather that wins Super Bowl. I mean, you're, I mean, the list goes on with all these guys that played at a high, high level at the football position sport. What's it just been like growing up knowing that you have a family of athletes that have all really done the same path that you want to in terms of sports? It's really nice because I've been going to my cousins and my dad and my uncle and even my grandpa for advice all the time. The recruiting process it's a little different now than it was back then, but the recruiting process now and just being able to narrow my schools and what I should be looking for and just being able to bounce ideas back and forth. And then growing up, looking up to them. I mean, Ben and Skronik, uh won a state championship in basketball. He was a dual sport athlete in high school, won a state championship in basketball. So I grew up looking up to him because um, he was kind of the older cousin that was in town. So um, that's definitely something that was cool about a football family. I also watched him play football and grow up there. And then his first four years at uh, Northwestern with my other cousin, just going to games, it's just lifelong memories. And being able to watch my Uncle Trent at a younger age, too, and see him play on a big stage, it's just really cool to be able to grow up and tell people kind of who you're related to. I feel like for some people, we hear the stories of families obviously not really being supportive of guys playing another sport, especially when they're so ingrained at – a certain sport and also just trying to live up to the expectations of having pros in the family, of having college guys in the family. How did you kind of grow through that and learn? And how has your family kind of embraced you being a basketball player? My family, I'd say this over and over again, is one of the most supportive families um, there that come. Uh, both of my parents have said from day one, we will support you in anything that you want to do, anything that you love to do. And they knew that basketball was my love and they never forced football on me one time. They, I could have walked away from it when I was, 10 years old and they would have been completely fine with it. They always just said, do what you love and do it, do it to the max um, of your ability. So that's kind of always what I've done. And uh, I've enjoyed football to this year. And I came to my dad and said, I don't think I should be playing this year. And he said, he agreed with me. And he realized that it was a good time for me to probably um, hang up the cleats and just focus on basketball. So growing up in a football family, a lot of people think that you're forced to play football, but I've just always enjoyed it through the whole way. And my family has been hundred percent supportive and they're excited for me to be a basketball player. My final football question I want to ask is, obviously it takes a lot more guys to play a football game than one-on-one -on -one basketball, but you do have enough people in the family that could have possibly played some four-on-four, seven-on-seven kind of football. Do you guys ever have any of those family games? Well, a lot of the cousins are a lot older than me. So growing up, I was always the young guy um, compared to them. So I didn't really get in many of those football games. Um, but when Ben comes back or some of the cousins come back and they want to talk smack about basketball, I just kind of play them in one-on-one -on -one and show them that they can't hang. That's awesome, man. You yeah. talk about, I mean, you are back at school. You guys are able to probably going to have a season now, hopefully. You're at Homestead, big time senior year upcoming for you. What, what kind of goals, what's your expectations for the year? Well, we got big hopes this year for Homestead. I don't know if you saw, but um, Fletcher Lawyer uh, came from Michigan. He moved to Homestead. So we've got a, two high major players on the same high school team. And whenever you have that, you have a chance to go far in the tournament. So the goal this year is none less than the state championship. So we're going to try and make it there. Uh, and then I also have 998 points. So the first game that we get back, hopefully I score my 1,000 point. Hopefully I don't get shut out. So um, just the stuff like that, being able to be with the teammates. We got a great team this year, um, a bunch of NAI guys, role, role player guys, and guys that will buy in. So this year should be really fun. And 
Uh, my goal is for a state championship for sure. Let's go Fletcher for a little bit. He's a guy that's obviously said a high major player, top guy in 2022. Have you guys really talked before? How did this kind of team up occur? Yeah, so his family, his uh, family is related to people um, in Fort Wayne. So they're actually from Fort Wayne. And his family decided that it would be best for him and his sister to move to Fort Wayne and uh, play sports here. So he actually went to the, from my understanding, I'm not 100% sure, I haven't really asked him, but from what people tell me, he, his family went to the Indy Heat director and asked, like, what program is kind of the best in Fort Wayne and stuff like that. And they kind of said Homestead. And um, that's a place that they looked at and really liked. So Fletcher decided to come play. Um, I actually texted him after I heard the rumors that he might be coming. I invited him up to just hang out and, he told us that he's for sure moving. So that was definitely exciting just to be able to get another player that I can make better and he can make me better. And we can go out and practice every single day and make each other better. Um, and then come together as teammates and hopefully win every game this year. So it's, it, it's been good. You're coming off a year averaging nearly 18 a game, seven rebounds, three assists, a little over a steal per game. That's big time numbers. You are now in your senior season. You're also adding a guy like Fletcher. I mean, where do you see your numbers kind of turning out or what's kind of your goals for you in your numbers this upcoming season? Um, one goal for me is definitely to up my three point percentage. Um, not a lot of people know this, but last year it was not very good at all. Um, and I'm not one to make excuses, but my three point percentage was pretty high. And then against North Central, I, my elbow, I landed on my elbow and it got really inflamed. So I had to wear a shooting sleeve the rest of the season, which for shooters, that's, that's big change when you got to wear something on your arm for the rest of the season. Um, so that kind of brought it down. And then also I had to play out of position because our point guard was hurt last year with a back problem. So I was running the point guard with an, um, an arm seat that I wasn't really used to. Um, so that kind of brought my percentage down. But, I mean, I'm not one to make excuses. It shouldn't have been uh, that bad. But definitely three-point percentage this year and just to show everybody that I can um, do what I do at a high level with another guy on my team. Um, who knows what my numbers will be. If we go whatever and oh and win state championship and I average 12 a game, I'll be – really happy it's kind of a team thing for me and regardless of my numbers I just want to win that's big time man a few more things before I let you go one is talking about Indy Heat I mean as we talked about your AU season is now done your career is done but overall I mean you look back at the way you've developed and obviously got to play a few tournaments this past year now what's kind of your biggest takeaways what's some of your favorite memories from your AU career my favorite memories by far was Peace Jam last year um to start with 16U play the first couple tournaments and then uh, Justin Powell, actually, he got hurt, so that was that was tough for them. But they gave me the call and said, would you like to play 17U? And it was a great experience to be able to play at that level and then go to Peace Jam and play against guys that are going to be in the league in a couple of years and high-level talent and um, the competition that we played and the atmosphere. Everything about Peace Jam was just something I'll never forget. And so that was definitely my uh, favorite memory of AAU. There was last one of your last games, obviously, you guys played – you guys versus Indiana Lee, a big-time game with tons of talent. I mean, there's yeah. well over 10 guys that are high major players. What was that game like? Well, we got smacked. We <laughs> played terrible. So, mm -hmm. uh, to say it lightly, we did not play well at all. Um, it was a bad game for a lot of players on our team, and we just didn't perform like we should have. Um, a lot of people around the country and people that rank other people saw that and – obviously did not think too highly of us. So that's something that I wish we could get back. Last AAU game ever, didn't want to go out like that. But um, Indiana Elite played a great game. They got great players. They got a great program over there, great coaches. So not to take anything away from them, but I think if we got a second shot, we would definitely beat them. You see all that talent. I mean, obviously, there are some guys from other states on your guys' teams, but you look at just having that much talent on a court. What was that feeling like? What was it like just seeing all these high major elite guys? It's just a statement to Indiana basketball. Everybody says Indiana basketball is the best, and there it is right there. It's proof for you. I mean, you got, I think, four or five guys in that is, uh, are on that court. Um, we're ranked in the top 100 in ESPN. Um, Christian Lander, if he would have stayed, too, that's another guy. So you just got guys that are so gifted and so talented all on the same court that live in the same state, and you just think, like, it's crazy that all these guys are from the same state and could possibly play each other in the state tournament. So having all those guys together and um, knowing that they're representing the state, too, is really cool. No doubt, man. My final thing before I let you go, discuss building a legacy for yourself. That's something I think a lot of guys want to do. So when you are done playing basketball someday, what do you want a legacy to be for what you achieve both on and off the court? Um, I just want my legacy to be known as the person that always did everything for his team. I want to be that teammate. Um, that does everything, great teammate, great leader, and I want to be known as a great person. I want people to say, yeah, that kid was good at basketball, but he was also a great person. And 
I want to be known as that. And I also want to be known for uh, winning some big games and making some big shots. So saw that together and just being the overall uh, great person and people saying um, when they talk about me that he was a great guy and he did everything that he could to help his team win. You're also a believer. Talk about your faith a little bit and really how your faith has grown over the past few years as an athlete with God. Yeah, so growing up in a Christian household, um, my parents definitely got me into um, religion and reading the Bible and everything about that um, at a young age. I've been going to church. We try to every Sunday. It's hard with the AAU during the summers and everything um, just because we're so busy, but I'm um, just trying to go to church as much as possible. I'm in part of FCA. I'm one of the leaders for FCA at my school, so just trying to integrate um, Jesus Christ and my faith into everything that I can do is definitely something that's big for me. And uh, without him, obviously, I wouldn't be here at all, wouldn't even be close. So um, having a strong faith is something my parents preach to me um, all the time. And it just definitely helps me when I'm in um, some bad situations and good situations. And it's something that I take pride in. What would you say has been the biggest moment you've seen God show up in your life so far? Oh, that's a good question. Um, my grandma actually was diagnosed with breast cancer and she beat it. And um, I've never seen my mom and my family so sad um, when that happened. And my grandparents have been in a couple of tough places with uh, um, health issues like that. And just to see God work through them and work through my family has been something that um, has really, I've really taken to heart. That's awesome, man. As you move now up to college and pros hope, hopefully after that, how do you continue to spread God's word and be the light? Yeah, like I said, with FCA, um, I want to be very involved in that. Obviously, Tim Tebow is kind of the, the head of that or just kind of the guy for that. But that's something that I always want to do um, when I get older is just kind of let people know about my faith and know that I'm a, a God-trusting man and um, kind of just be involved as much as possible, try and um, get people to kind of see what he can do for you and um, everything about that. Absolutely, man. My final thing is give Illinois fans your three biggest goals that you have, that you have set for yourself for your Illinois career. Ooh, Big Ten Championship, Final Four, and my goal is to break a record, a three-point record or something, like made in the season, made in the game, something like that, just to show people I am the shooter that I am. Absolutely, man. Well, I'm definitely excited to see what God's got next for you, man, and keep on being the light. Yes, sir. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Of course, you're all welcome on, man. God bless. Yeah, you too.